Welcome to 1906, the apex of America's golden age. Freedom reigns as the citizens of Old York City rejoice for soup kitchens, knee-high bathing suits, and baseball without shoes. Mighty motor carriages storm the streets. Mummies are the wave of the future. And President Jaime Hausenheimer wins a fifth term in office as he leads our noble country in the war against horses. Sadly, it's also a period of unrest, as crime hits an old-time low and police growing up that upholding the law. At times like these, it's up to the private sector to remind the world what America stands for. To keep the streets safe, you need an old-fashioned man with an old-timey sense of justice. You need... Chester Cornfield! Hello, Chester. Come quick. I'll be needing your help. Constable Greenwald! How may I assist my favorite bluecoat this fine morn? There's been a poisoning at Mary's chicken wagon and I don't feel like doing all the work. You need to get down here and solve the case for me. Goodness gracious, not the chicken wagon! Sit tight, old boy. Cornfield will be there lickety-split. Why, it's my granddaddy, Reginald P. Cornfield, the original old-timey detective. Back in the day, he brought Boston's tea terrors to justice, defeated a ring of donkey smugglers, and helped President Lincoln land on the moon. These tomes contain all the inspiration and know-how needed to become a world-class old-timey detective. The complete collection of my granddaddy's work has inspired me from childhood to pursue the noble career of an old-timey detective. Alas, poor granddaddy finally met his end battling his arch-nemesis Damien Dukesbury atop a runaway train filled with explosives. It was a tragic final chapter, but worth it to save that orphanage full of puppies. If one is to deliver old-timey justice, one must learn the loopholes to keep one's old-timey ways out of modern prisons. This 500-page account describes the proper way to ground an opponent with but two quick jabs to the nose and ear. Ah, old wives' tales. The bane of an old-timey detective's work. No matter what evidence you amass against the deviant, they can easily be cleared of all charges should their nose itch whenever an owl hoots at sunset. Some follow the Old Testament, others follow the New, but an old-timey detective only follows the Old-Timey Testament. It's a lot like the other two, but with less cheek-turning and more ear-boxing. I already know every story by heart. I'll peruse it further should anything relevant turn up. I don't need to refresh my skills just yet. I've already given ten miscreants cauliflower ear this week and my knuckles could use a breather. I've already read this front to back, left to right, right to left, and back to front, just in case there were any secret messages. There were none, in fact. This is only for emergencies. Reading too many old wives' tales can drive a man to the brink of madness. I already carry it in my heart. This waste disposal unit, or as they call it in France, La Poubelle, has been in the family for generations. At the moment it's filled with chicken bones from the many takeout meals my sweet darling Betty Sue has been bringing me from the poultry pantry. I'll take out the trash when I'm off the clock. Besides, those chicken bones aren't hurting anyone. I hang my hat and coat here whenever I'm not wearing them. I like to believe affirming such mundane notions out loud puts one on the path to proper mental health. I've no need to carry it around or barricade the office door at the moment. Ah, old York City. A shiny Gotham where freedom and capitalism collide in a beautiful cornucopia of peace, population, and prosperity. Ah, my first case. Nobody in this town swaps heads on a dinosaur skeleton when Chester Cornfield's on the job. The Telemophoner is a miracle of modern science. Through the magic of its crank-based dialing system, I can speak to any of the nine people in the city who own one. Whom shall I call? Hello? Willie, my stalwart Boy Scout assistant. Where the devil are you? Sorry, sir. Mental 
to go and sick at it. My boy, I pay you two penny shavings a week to run errands. How am I supposed to deliver old timey justice if you're sick at home with the pox? A nasty bit of blue. I think it is. Can't get out of bed. <laughs> Very well. Get some rest and drink plenty of scotch. But I expect you to be down here first thing tomorrow morning. Aye, sir. Bless you, sir. Whom shall I call? Constable Rainwald speaking. Rainwald, old boy. What in Houdini's good name am I supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be down here helping me with a case. Ah, yes. Right you are. Tally ho, I suppose. It's a fine mahogany construct from the Nickelberger and Sons Wood Product Company. I need not rummage through my drawers just yet. All there is in my desk is more scotch. What better way to start a morning than with fancy man scotch straight from the bottle? Better take this on the road. Wouldn't want to sober up too much during this investigation. The fumes from this fine ceramic ashtray have lent a lovely yellow hue to my surroundings. I've ruined far too many suits carrying around my filthy ashtrays. These two pieces of paper certify both my investigating authority and right to deliver the old one-two on miscreants. I'm here, Greenwald! Where's the fire? Oh, no, not, not so loud. Hey, gads, man, are you sober on the job? Last night's bachelor party at the pub took a lot out of me. I, I don't even remember who was getting married. It was a rowdy night indeed, but that's no excuse to forget your morning scotch. I know, I know, I'm a disgrace to the uniform. But alas, we're wasting valuable time. What seems to be the problem? Right, well, Father Vincelli here came in the morning for chicken and eggs, and then shortly after eating, broke out in yellow spots and started coughing. So they called the doctor, who called the police, to hold Miss Mary for questioning. I keep telling them the priest was sick already. That's alright, my child. I forgive you. Doesn't sound like a criminal offence. What mystery needs solving? Well... The thing is, it seems Miss Mary here has a slight history working around people who fall mysteriously ill. And you suspect she might be poisoning them on purpose? I suspect she might be one of them serial killers. Very well, what do you need to close the case? As usual, weapon, motive and opportunity. We need to determine if Father Vincelli is really poisoned, prove Miss Mary has done this before, and disprove her claim that she was already sick. It's Miss Mary, rival chicken chef to my darling Betty Sue. Why do you hate Father and Shelley? I don't hate him. He's a very nice man with a lovely service on Sundays. And God loves you, my child. Admit it! You hate his guts! You wanted to see him suffer! Nonsense! I'm the one who caught the doctor! A likely front for your devious actions! I'm watching you. <laughs> Mary, how dare you poison your customers! This man's a staple of the religious community! Do you realize how damaging this will be to your business? I did not poison this man. Even I'm heavily reconsidering eating here again. You only eat from Betty's poultry pantry. That woman undercooks all her chicken and doesn't wash her hands. She's a culinary menace to the community. A little cholesterol is a small price to pay for the most scrumptious of butter wrap drumsticks. Her cooking will kill you. This, I promise. Don't go anywhere. 
It's Father Vincelli, the sweetest old preacher I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. How fare you, Father? Yeah. Could I offer anything to ease your suffering? The love of God warms my heart and gives me fuzzies. <laughs> Were you feeling under the weather earlier? Uh. I recall seeing you at last night's party, but you seemed spot-free then. Did you perhaps ingest something sketchy between then and now? Hmm. Yes? Hmm. Yes? <laughs> Poor man's delirious. Well, that's how he always talks. I desperately need some answers. Does the Bible have any? Rub thy puppy's belly to make much happy the puppy. I meant something more relevant to this case. Ah, see, Ecclesiastes 7.10. Scotch maketh man as man maketh scotch. See, Jesus wishes you many hugs. I shall now go bring your attacker to justice. Go in peace, my child. Clodwig. <laughs> Clodwig, my diabolical Alamond half-brother. What the devil are you doing here? Chester, my loving brother. Hello. Don't tell me you're the doctor. Yeah, now I have my license and I get to be doctor today. Heaven help us all. Hooray! Why haven't you fixed Father Vincelli yet? There was a traffic accident on the way over. All my medical supplies were destroyed in the crash. And yet you survived. I can't perform a diagnosis without the proper tools. Fortunately, the diner has a first aid kit. Then why haven't you taken it? Because the priest made a little mess in there when he got sick. I don't want to sleep on the mess and ruin my trousers. Fair enough, I suppose. Perhaps I can sneak in and try my hand at securing the proper tools. I also need something to cover my mouth, so I don't get sick. What evil lurks in your black, black heart? Oh, Chester! Why do you hate me so? I needn't explain myself, you despicable canker blossom. Your sick, loathsome mind is a wicked web of depravity and demented schemes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I see now. Surely you jest. Your foolhardy antics are destined to doom us all. <laughs> so funny. Stop deflecting my criticism. Nobody likes you, Clodwig. I like him. I like him too. Bless you, Clodwig. I'm on to you. Be gone from my sight. That must be this week's flag. It seems we now pledge allegiance to the old star stripes and shredded wheat. Breakfast of champions. Somebody left a penny nickel in the tip jar. I'm rich. Rich, I tell ya. Crossing this floor shall require skill. Fortunately, I've acquired the art of Jim Kwon Do during my journeys through the Orient. But I must be quick in finding the proper path, lest I lose my balance in these trousers. I shall return yet again after a brief visit to my chiropractor. I'd hazard there's a few hazards across this floor. I shall return yet again. Third time's the charm. At all. Now I have to go home and change my trousers. Just my luck that the cleanest spot on the floor is also the most treacherous. <laughs> Almost had it that time. My allergies are.
flying up near that window. I should best avoid it in the near future. I could probably cross the rest of this floor as is, but I refuse to do this half-heartedly. No, I shall go all the way home, change my trousers, return, and try yet again! My allergies are flaring up near that- I think I took just my luck that the- Thank goodness, I'm just my luck that. Bless my allergy. If I maintain constant movement. If I may Almost had it just If I maintain constant move Success! I have now acquired the proper medical supplies! Why ha there was a- and I can't- Then why- Because- Fair enough, I suppose. I- Be gone! I found you some medical supplies! Excellent! With these, I will have the patient diagnosed in no time! The sooner you leave, the better. Mary's Chicken Wagon. A vile place of overcooked poultry and bathrooms filled with hand soap. Any establishment where you can't count rats during your meal is up to something. Not another train movie! I couldn't even stay in the theater for 10 of the first film's 15 seconds! As much as I appreciate watching a train depart the station, I mustn't pull myself away from the case at hand. Why ha I also need something to cover my mouth, so I don't get sick! Be gone f If I lend you my handkerchief, would you get on with the investigation? Ah, yes, thank you, brother! Don't call me that! Very well, I shall now inspect the patient. I have completed my exam. What did you find? He has, in fact, been poisoned! But this goes beyond mere food poisoning. What is it then? Out with it! The culprit is a rare contagious bacteria that incubates inside the living person. Vincelli could only have caught this illness from someone else. And not his food? Nine. The bacteria at this stage only transmits through saliva. That proves it. I am not sick, therefore I am not responsible. Unless, as a carrier, you are immune to its effects and have been spitting on people's food. Have you been spitting on people's food? In any case, it seems we've reached our diagnosis. Ta-da! Good job for Clodvig! Don't... What proof?
proof have we that Mary's poisoned before? Just hearsay around the station. Sadly, we've nothing on file about her employment history. Why haven't you asked her yourself? I'd interrogate her myself, but I'm afraid she's a bit too hysterical for my sensibilities. Nonsense! Modern medicine has disproven the existence of womanly hysteria, my good man. Why, it's no more real than lady rabies or the non-German measles. Well, she's also quite surly. I rather think an old-timey interrogation might be in order for this one. Old-timey? Why, that's my specialty! How are we sure the priest wasn't already sick? Because he walked through the door with his left foot, scratched his nose and passed the gas. That is how I know. Come again? It's an old wives' tale, Chester. Not another old wives' tale. Those always hold up in court. If you can disprove her story, maybe we have a case. Otherwise, she has our potatoes in a windmill. I'll speak to her further on this. Quite a shindig last night, wasn't it? The bachelor party? Aye, there was a, there was a fair bit of rowdiness. Would have been grounds for arrest if I weren't been dancing on the tables with a lot of you. And I think I saw you kissing one of the dancing girls. The ladies love a man in uniform. You did a fair share of kissing as well, didn't you? Well, no woman alive can resist my dashing charms. I would never kiss anyone but my fair future cornfield, the lovely Miss Petty. Oh, she's a lovely lass indeed. You're lucky to have found each other, Chester. Perhaps we'll have another bachelor party in the near future, eh? We'll see, Greenwald, old boy. We'll see. We shall speak again. Alright, Missy, tell me about your former employer. Last week I was chef for Mayor Archibald Frisk. I quit and opened my own chicken place because Betty's tastes like raw sewage. Lies! All lies! Okay, whatever. I worked as a spy in the French Secret Service and then spent seven years climbing mountains in Zimbabwe. Lies! Still lies! I don't know what you want from me. All right, miss- Last week I- Did you poison the mayor with your cooking as well? He fell ill, but not from my cooking. And take much pride in hygienic food preparation. But I saw him last week while solving the case of the smoking specter. We had jolly good laughs and even shared a cigar in good spirits. What else could have befallen the mayor? You're the detective. Why don't you call him and find out? Very well. Give me his number and I'll ring him on the mophone. Five. Tell me about this old wives tale of yours. If a man enters a room with his left foot, scratches his nose and passes gas, he is sick. Father Vincelli did just that before eating. How would one falsify your old wives' tale? There is one instance of an incorrect study. If a man looks at the sun and does not sneeze, then he is alright and the woman is wrong. Like an allergy to the sun? What is this witchcraft of which you speak? It's not witchcraft, it's called photic sneeze reflex. It is a sneeze triggered by light stimuli that affects approximately 30% of the population. Yet it has a 100% success rate in disproving old wives' tales. Gertel puts money on it. I'll spare you the embarrassment and dispel your claim here and now, as there's a perfectly good sun right up there, and I am clearly not! Oh, uh, sorry. Still wrong. Blast this old wives' tale. There must be a safeguard of sorts against it. It's empty. I'm not crossing that floor again. The first aid kit is on the other end of this mess. I can't reach it from here.
don't go. I shall not go in peace, man. Claude Wig. Claude Wig, you appear more diseased than usual. Yeah, I suppose the handkerchief did not help. I hope you learned your lesson about meddling in career paths you have no business pursuing. Maybe being a doctor isn't such a good idea after all. <sighs> Perhaps instead, I can become an old-timey detective, like you! Be gone from my side! We shall speak again. <laughs> Fancy man scotch. The only brand of gentleman's whiskey any man worth his mustache would be seen drinking in public. This six cent lead coin is a shining testament to America's imperial economy. I shan't be returning our tip until this case has been resolved. Our roadmobile, part tractor, part boat, all American. Whom shall I call? Chum, it's your pal, Chester Cornfield. How fair you this fine morn? Archie, gracious man, are you sober? Five bottles. Only five bottles of scotch, you say? My word, Archie, you become a lightweight in your endeavors as mayor. I barely understand a word. I shall be quick then, Archie. Do you remember the housekeeper in your employ whilst we were solving the mystery of the smoking spectre last week? One Mary Mushka? You <coughs> felt deathly ill shortly after. Can you describe the symptoms? <coughs> I see. Archibald, I fear my iron constitution prevents me from ever being blood enough to understand you. <coughs> Fairly well, old chum. My threshold for spirits is too high for me to sink to Archie's level. I'll need to find a fellow lightweight to translate his symptoms for me. Whom shall I call? I shan't be bothering Willie any further. He'll be given a very stern verbal paddling the next time I see him. Constable Greenwald speaking! Greenwald, old boy! What in Houdini's good name am I supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be down here helping me- Ah! Uh, No matter one of these might help my case.
still around. Last this old wives' tale. The, the penny nickel is now in my nose. Still around. Last this old wives' tale. Penny nickel is already in my nose. <coughs> Can you whistle Yankee Doodle round the mountain for me? Sorry, I'm on break. On break from whistling? That's preposterous! You have a problem? You take it up with the Whistlers Union. <coughs> I've spoken to Mary's former employer. According to Mayor Frisk, there's John Parsh and they were yellow in that portion of Barmish Gallagher. Is that drunk speak? I'm afraid so. Hmm. Don't think I'd be much help interpreting in my current state. Should I even bother asking if you can whistle for me? Yeah, I can. Would you like me to? On second thought, no. You'll probably whistle it backwards and summon the devil. Be gone from my sight. Can you whistle Yankee Doodle round the mountain? See, si, see, si, of course. Success! As you can see, I am sneeze-free. That can't be right. What trickery is this? Trickery or not, I've falsified your claim. And, by your own admission, that should hold up in court. Thanks, Chester. <coughs> Don't... We shall- I shall now go in pe- Be gone! Whom shall I call? I shan't be bothering. I already carried. These contain all the boring paperwork and stolen evidence I've procured over the years. I shan't go disorganizing my well-organized files lest I absolutely, positively must. These two pieces of paper certify both my investigating authority and right to deliver the old one-two on miscreants. Without a translator, I won't be getting much else out of him.
Have you already your morning medicine, madam? I don't drink scotch. Only vodka. <laughs> Blasphemy! <coughs> Here, Greenwald. This should fuzzle you right up. Thanks, Chester, but... I'm going to take it easy. I'm very much a lightweight when hungover. Don't want to go too over the edge. I've... Sp according to... Is that drunk? I'm afraid so. Hmm. Don't... Hold up. Pass me that bottle again. Now, uh, repeat that. The Shromish Marsh and there was red yellow and that hooked in the farm of blue doula. The mayor was coughing with yellow spots and pooped a blue colour. Why, that sounds mighty familiar. It's a coincidence the Prester did not poop. Oh, yes he did. Well, was it blue? <laughs> Just a little. Would you like to see? No, no. No, we'll sort that out later. But that settles that. Two out of three symptoms confirmed. There's clearly a connection. Good job, Chester. I've concluded my investigation. So what's the verdict? I've determined that not only is Father Vincelli suffering from a highly contagious form of bacteria, but that Mary's former employer suffered from the same symptoms while she was in his employ. With the old wives' tale disproven, it's safe to say that Father Vincelli acquired the illness at this establishment, most likely through Miss Mary who has unknowingly carried this illness for months, or even years. Preposterous. My chicken wagon has the cleanest kitchen in the city. Preposterous, is it? Then how is it that everyone you meet falls ill will you're the model of good health? The fact fits, and I therefore conclude, madam, that as the healthiest person present, you are an immune carrier and must be quarantined. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't feel so well. Hold up now, no faking it. Looks real enough to me, Chester. Then perhaps she's not as immune to this disease as we first imagined. Maybe there's someone you overlook? Nonsense. Mary's the only connection between everyone infected. Who else could it be? Hold up, hold up. Chester, at last night's party, you didn't happen to share a drink with Father Vincelli, did you? Of course not. I merely helped him chew the crust off a disgusting sandwich he ordered. And did you also happen to share anything with the mayor during your case together last week? Why, in fact, we shared a cigar. I share everything with everyone. I even shared my raw chicken dinner with young Ward Williams, the poor, sick little tyke. You sneezed on me with your nasty chicken breath. And gave me your scotch. And lent me your handkerchief. Come now, surely you don't think I'm... I'm... Greenwald, old chum, I do believe we found our culprit. Would you kindly do me the honor of taking me into custody? It'll be my pleasure, Chester. Another case solved for Chester Cornfield!